Welcome back. We appreciate you spending some time with us as always here on the Roundtable program. This story broke a couple of months ago. A Perrysburg woman accused of steal stealing nearly a hundred thousand dollars from schools and community groups out in the Perrysburg area. She is now uh, being charged with three felony theft charges and the investigation continues. But from this negative comes a positive. And the Perrysburg community coming together, kind of pulling itself up by the bootstraps, pulling itself off the mat after such uh, an occurrence like this. Just they were all blind to it, unfortunately. But now out of that comes late in the summer, a community organization comes together and puts together an event, which they are hoping recoups not only some of those funds, but uh, I guess restores the spirit that is already there in the community. Glad to have Superintendent Tom Hosler with us with some other guests, and we will get to Sherino. Hanyan is the PEPA president. We will get to her and also Missy Madigan and Emily Hayes both coming together for this event. Thank you all first and foremost for taking the time to talk about this. I am lucky enough you asked me to be a part of this event and I thought maybe a bigger conversation was necessary before it actually happened. And Tom, as we look at what happened and obviously the negative stain, people reacted, people were like, how could this ever happen? But out of this experience, Yes, there is the downfall, but there's kind of the learning process as well. Where are we now as far as Perrysburg kind of saying, okay, it happened, but now we're making sure it doesn't happen again? Right. Um, no group wants to think that this could ever happen to them. You know, we're so fortunate to have wonderful parents like those that are here today to, that, that work very hard for our students. And really, that, that's what makes Perrysburg what it is today is just the terrific parents that, that give so much of their time and efforts and energies. Um, actually, this whole situation came to light because PEPA was doing exactly what they were supposed to do. Within two bank statements, two mm -hmm. months, they realized that there was something wrong. And when that third one did arrive, they immediately contacted the authorities. So the safeguards were in place. Unfortunately, um, it's, it's difficult to talk about the matter since it is something that... Um, Still uh, under investigation. Uh, yes, yes, yes. But, um, Unfortunately, based on the indictment, uh, the charges that, um, that, that are there, she uh, was able to access that money very rapidly. Yeah. And, and, um, and of course, it left a huge you know, gap for, for those organizations. It, it, this was one of those things as well. And from a, uh, from a parent's perspective, outside of your involvement with the organizations, I mean, I know when this story broke, around the community. There were so many saying, oh, does it involve this? Does it involve that? And daggone it, sure enough, we found out it did. A number of the things that so many parents, whether it be Toth Elementary directly, but there were so many other organizations that fell prey to this. So I guess, how do you build up the confidence once again? I guess you do it through events like this, right, Emily? Yeah, um, the reason I started to do this wasn't just necessarily for my children and the, the wonderful programs that we've had in, in the past. It was more Which for the community. a lot of the kids don't understand what happened. They don't, and, we don't and they don't know where everything comes from. Right. They don't know that, you know, their mommies have worked, you know, tirelessly to raise the funds to, to have these programs. And, you know, we're, we're neighbors, we're friends. I knew what horrible experience this was for all of them, and I just it broke my heart. Yeah. And you know, I've I've not been as involved as I'd like to be. So I thought, you know what, this is a good chance for us to really rally together. This is a big fundraiser that's coming up on August 25th. We'll get to the particulars in just a minute. Sharina, as you go back and and look as far as the community banding together, talk a little bit about PEPA, some people who are watching in the other areas, what they don't know about that organization and, and what you guys have done is kind of a, I guess, a fail proof for the future. Um, PEPA was formed to bring educational programs into the schools. These are extra educational programs that are not funded by the schools. And so we have like several reading programs that we have in place now. We have eco discovery where you have eco discovery coming into the classroom and providing hands on um, projects for the kids. Yeah. We had uh, this Learning past year. And things along yes, that this past year we had um, a great review. We had the uh, um, opera come in and the kids all got to experience the opera firsthand. Um, we have um, authors, we pay for author visits to the schools. Mm -hmm. 
and things like that. So for us, it's, it's been you know, a really good experience going in, working with the kids, seeing the positive effects that we can have on the kids. But these type of um, events, these type of things you're talking yes. about just don't appear out of thin air. There's a lot yep. of planning and yes. there's money that goes behind it as well. Yes, we have to pay for the books, we pay for the, you know, the facilities, we pay for the Toledo Opera to come in. Mm -hmm. And what we try to do is provide the same um, program to all four elementary schools. Toth was so. the one elementary that came out to the forefront, but as we've discussed here before we came out today, a lot of the other schools are all coming in, a number of elementaries in the Perrysburg district and obviously the junior high and high school as well, but everybody kind of coming together and not only saying we don't want this to happen to us, but how can we get involved, how can we help? We've had tremendous support. All three of the other elementaries um, gave us startup funds. Um, also, the high school gave us startup funds for next year because our account was depleted. Mm -hmm. um, so they have been more than gracious. And Emily contacted us immediately and was ready to go forward with a fundraiser to help us. J just to give people an idea, and when you talk about, Tom, $100,000, in school terms, in, in trying to do the daily necessities as far as a district is concerned, that's pocket change to all the money that goes in. But for some type of entity like this and for a, a school account for some of these organizations, that's a big chunk of change. It's a, it was a devastating loss because they're in the middle of fundraising and they have um, things that they've purchased, commitments that they've made to do different things and when that, that money was gone. So at the end of the year, the, the Toth parents and Papa did a, a remarkable job of reaching out to make sure that the end of the year parties, some of those types of events, um, they still owed money to those organizations for those great educational programs. Mm -hmm. So they did a wonderful job of pulling things together and the community really came out and, and supported them. And um, that's been huge. So has it been a situation where we see these donations coming forward, they're paying off debt versus I guess filling the coffers for future activities. Um, correct. I would think probably miss, you know a little of both. Go ahead. I mean, bit, yeah, we're having a little bit of both. We're we're making sure that we honor our commitments mm -hmm. for this past year. But our fundraiser is specifically for raising funds for making sure that we fund the programs for the next school year. Yeah, and, and, I, and obviously, yeah. I, I I'm not going to speak words for you, put words in your mouth. But I mean, there, there's embarrassment, there's frustration, all Complete of that frustration. stuff. frustration. She became a personal friend of mine, um, so that was a hard bit. So I think the Toth community itself is affected different than maybe Peppa. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just, it's, we're trying to build trust back with our Toth families. Or even the athletics. That was something that we haven't mentioned yet is there was an athletic organization as well that had monies extracted from it. So let's get to this event. Let's let's talk about the end of August, um, the planning, the preparation, I guess, and, and the real goal. You call it going the extra mile um, from a literal sense. That it's a mile walk run. Uh, you're, you're inviting people that they can go an extra mile if they want. Right. But 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 coming up with the, the possibility of doing something like this you highlight it's for the kids it is for the kids it's also for the community I really wanted to raise the spirits of everyone I grew up in Perrysburg I um, went to Toth myself mm -hmm. I graduated from Perrysburg High School and I even taught at Toth for about a year mm -hmm. um, I just love the community and we never fall we may you know have had something bad happen to us but we just love each other we work together and we work very hard because I think a lot of us live in Perrysburg because we want to have a wonderful school system for our kids mm -hmm. and the way we do that is to just to work hard and you know I feel bad this summer my kids have been lacking you know the vacation that you know we usually have because we've been pounding the pavement going from business to business but the donations and the support are phenomenal. I guess you were saying the reception so far has been pretty positive and you're looking to get a lot of people involved as this moves forward. Talk a little bit about going door to door and what has what has the response been? What are you hearing? Thank goodness something like this is being done? I think so. <laughs> Emily yeah. does a lot more door to door than I, the rest yeah, of I us. Have a, I have a marketing team that we've been yeah. going door to door to. Um, we have a few people that have said, what are you going to do in the future? Mm -hmm. You know, they're very worried that we're not going to put precautions in place, but we have. Um, I think Mr. Hostler can speak to that. Um, and I just explain that. I said, you know, just explain that the situation is not something we can talk about, but we yeah. really want to 
put something in place for the next school year for our kids because we want to continue that standard of excellence. And you see the flyer that was put together and has been posted around uh, town, kind of letting people know when, where, how, and who, and all that jazz. It, it, Tom, as Emily brought up, talk about in, talking about the safeguards, you said there have been neighboring communities, neighboring districts that have said, we don't want this to happen to us either, so right. what are you doing as a protection? Right, it, it's, it's really an interesting challenge because the parent organizations are not necessarily school accounts, so the safe safeguards that the school district has in place um, oftentimes don't apply to these independent organizations. So what we've done is we've surveyed other community groups uh, that work with schools to find out what they do and uh, we also have uh, talked to some local CPAs, um, uh, Larry Davenport's group for one, uh, about what kinds of things they can recommend and we're coming out with a list of things um, ranging from having bank statements ma mailed to you know multiple people, mm -hmm. um, you know background checks for those leaders, which we currently don't do, um, just those kind of simple things to signers for the checks. Different. Uh, some of our organizations already do that. Yeah. Um, so what we want to do is kind of a standard. It's frustrating approach. to listen to this because yeah. it's not. These aren't. I mean, are they elected positions? You volunteer, right? Right. <laughs> And, and, but, but it's a, going through the scrutiny, we've gotten to that point where you've got to go through the scrutiny of being checked, being, and I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm just saying it's, it's, we, we, and that's a it great stinks. Point, Scott, because we don't want to create an environment where that parent who volunteers is going to go through a selection process like right. hiring. We want it to be something that people They're going to be vetted. Are, yeah. Before, yeah. <laughs> people who, are, who want to donate, they, they need to know that the money is going to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. But as I sat in church a few Sundays ago, there was a bulletin from our church group about the fact that there had been another parish that had been struck by a similar kind of a mm -hmm. thing. And he, reminding, here's the safeguards that are in place. But one of the things that struck me as I was reading this on a Sunday was you can never take the human element out of it. So we want to do the best that we can to have the, the records and all those things in place. But at the end of the day, it's that human element. Yeah. And that's what made, made this such a, um, a personal hit, I yeah. think, is and because you're excited when that parent raises their hand and right. says, I'll do that. Right. <laughs> and Peppa had all the protection in place. Yeah. I mean, really, Peppa has done all of the things necessary, I think. August 25th, people just need to show up. Well, you can go online, yeah. um, our website, which is goingtheextramile.weebly.com, okay. and you can send in your application there, or you can show up the day of okay. and sign up then. Got to go to break. Thank you so much, all of you, for taking the time to talk about this, and we'll wrap things up for this Sunday right after this.